what's up everybody welcome back to my twisted life of poetry i am poetry you are here for another recap review discussion of greenleaf season three episode two really but it's part two of the season premiere and again this episode was a banger it was hitting on so many points it was a banger I haven't been around to all y'all channels to watch y'all recaps on it, but I can only imagine what Lynette and Stanley got going on over there. I got to come to church, go to my, have my service over there on Random TV Reviews channel, because this has been good. Let me tell y'all, Lady May was in rare form. Oh, my baby, she kicked down the door. Lynn Whitfield kicked down the door with that performance, baby, last night. She was doing the most man she brought all her thin she brought all her acting skills into that role she deserved an emmy a tony a oscar a grammy and i'm saying a grammy i know it wasn't musical but she sang that that performance sang to me last night she needed a grammy a naacp image of what she needed all of it the black girls rock lady may did the damn thing lynn whitfield played the hell out of that character last night baby all of them all of them, they all did such a good role. The only character on the show, oh, well, actually, that's not true. The two characters on the show that really don't do shit for me is Sophia and Darius, the Rick Fox character. They don't do nothing for me. I, they ain't even got to be there for real. I know Sophia is, is Grace, is this child, um, but Charity is one of the most boring characters on the show for me, and Sophia got her beat. I, I really wish they would do something more with her if she's going to be an inter, uh, integral part of the show. Like they're doing Zora. Zora got a storyline. Zora got issues, baby. And Jacob is putting down the, 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 the parenting skills on Zora. I'm like, yes, sir. That's how you do it. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> she came in there asking him could she use the phone. You want to punish me? Really, girl? But okay. What you need to use the phone for? She says she want to call Sophia up uh, and apologize to her. So Jacob, like, cool, you can call her. Here, use my phone right here. Okay, so she tried to do like most kids would do, take the phone and walk away. No, ma'am, Pam. That's not what we finna do right here. If you're going to call her, you're going to call her from right there. Do it right there. Ain't nothing you got to say to Sophia that you can't say in front of us. <laughs> Carissa think that Jacob is being too hard on him. I don't think that at all. Y'all wasn't hard enough to begin with, and that's why she in the position she in. But yeah, go ahead and put that daddy down on her, Jacob. Go ahead and put. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. You gonna use that phone? You gonna use it right here? You gonna use it right here? But you know, Zora got her little own little sneaky ways got going on anyway. So, um, cause Charity ended up coming over with uh Sophia with her, and so she had a cousin in the room, and. Sophie was like, I'm surprised you wanted me around because I thought you was mad at me. She's like, I was, uh, but I, I'm over it. No, come on. You, you don't recognize that she was helping you out. This nigga's beating your butt. He punched you in the face. That's enough. He, he beating your butt. He probably hit you more than one time. He done snatched you up, called bruising on your arms, and you don't see nothing wrong with that. Now, Carissa do got her in counseling, so I, I guess if she going to a counseling session, I don't even know if she really going because we never saw it, but it doesn't matter. And um, so the money she stole out the collection plate, she want Sophia to go get her a little prepaid cell phone. Now, Sophia, I think, was going to do it until she thought about it. She said, wait a minute. You about to call that little boy, little fake ass Miguel? And she like, she didn't answer. But her, her whole body movement, everything told her, yes, that's exactly what you're going to do. And Sophia said, oh, no. He beats you. He abuses you. I am not finna be the conduit to bridge y'all together. That's not what I'm finna do. I'm not, no, I'm not getting the phone. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> so, you know, of course, Zora was not having that. Zora was not like, come on now. Come on. What is with people today? This is my second time recording. At least this video started over. I almost had an accident not too long ago. Some itch bait just pulled in front of me. Oh, I had to calm myself, had to woo sigh, mama woo sigh. And now I hate this highway that I'm on. This is the one I gotta take to get to my mama to get the job from my mama's house. Anyway, so yeah, Zora was like pretty peeved that 
um, Sophia wasn't going to buy that phone for her. And I was so proud of Sophia sticking to her guns. This is not what you're going to do. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it for you. Can't you see? Girl, can't you see? I love you. Can't you see? I'm looking out for you. Why? What is not getting through your head that being abused is not love? The way he talks to you, the way he handles you, is not love. And he's a kid. Just think about what he's going to do when he gets older. Come on now, sis. Come, when you going to grow up? Grow up and open your eyes. It ain't necessarily about growing up. It's about opening your eyes and recognizing what's going on with you, Zora. When you going to do it, girl? How long? How long? Well, like I say, Jacob got his own little issues going on right now, too. Because um, at the church, you know, you know, service ain't like what is cracked up to be. You know, he ain't feeling it. He, he's always worrying about what's going on. He said he was worried about what the Zorm was going to run up out the church, whatever. And um, he got different stuff set up because he wanted to get this, this streaming service going. And it fired Brittany last week and Brittany called Tasha and Tasha like, you know, girl, they've been having it out for you since you've been here this and the third. So he needs Carissa to be there to be the first lady. He can show up and show out. Of course I can. I can do that. Well, Carissa, um, at her school, she has some some parents come in that think that their child should be uh, receiving A's instead of B's because they go into an Ivy League school. And I think that was a setup. This whole argument that she having in school and the parents wanted her to read the doggone essay over again and like, what you gonna do about this? My child shouldn't be getting no B's. They should be getting A. You no, know, I thought that was a whole setup. I like Carissa's answer. Like, I, I trust my teachers. I mean, he's, this is still a good grade. I'm, I'm gonna see what the problem is. But you got those parents. You do have those parents <clears throat> that want nothing but straight A's. I was accepting A's or B's, and then by the time my child got in a certain grade in school, I was like, you pass? Let's see? See, it's good. See, it's good. <laughs> you pass it. Um, so, that whole little scene, I thought it was a setup to keep her there longer, but she ended up missing the whole function. And Tasha ended up stepping in and taking over. Um, but afterwards, they were, they decided to go, I'm, I'm probably mixing this up. How did Tasha step in? Tasha stepped in. Tasha stepped in and filled the position. And people at the church thinking they know she the first lady. Basically, she's doing the first lady roles. This was basically what was going on. It was a successful event, even though the Carissa didn't make it. Um, what happened? I know I'm doing this out of order, y'all. Shoot. Because, okay, because Carissa stepped in and, and Carissa showed up to the church. And one of the ladies was like, was praising Tasha on what good of a job she did. And then she got introduced to Carissa. She was like, oh, I thought you was the first lady. And, you know, they corrected her kind of, sort of like, no, I'm the first lady. But she was going on and on about, wait a minute, you sure Tasha ain't you? And Tasha was just like, you know, come on, let's just go ahead. And she walked away from the situation where Carissa couldn't say her piece, you know, and really get a full introduction to the lady. And all the stuff that's going on with, um, she had, to, he wanted her to go somewhere with her. And she still had to go pick Zora up from counseling. That's the only reason why I know Zora's in counseling. She had to pick Zora from counseling. And from there, some other stuff with the school. I think with that same essay lady thing that's going on with the school, she couldn't go wherever Jacob wanted her to go next. So, here come Tasha again. Tasha ushered herself on in. Tasha trying to make her way into Jacob's bed. I don't know if it's all part of the plot or she really got a thing for Jacob, but she tried to make her way into Jacob bed. Or she just, you know, she they very manipulative. Her and uh Rochelle are very manipulative. So as she's trying to make her way into Jacob bed, he wanna buy his wife a gift. Uh I thought he was looking at clothes and stuff like that. And I thought they was looking at that same website that Rochelle was looking at trying to buy the lingerie for the bishop. And um she tell him, you know, buy her buy some jewelry. Maybe they went to her jewelry store. And uh, this this gaudy, ugly ass, ugly ass necklace that she picked out. 
ugly ass necklace that she picked out. I'm thinking, Jacob, you know damn well your wife not gonna like that. Your wife not gonna like that. And he, but he thought it looked good on Tasha, so he's like, you know what? I'm gonna buy it. Even though that price tag was way out of his reach. You see how he looked at it like, ugh, I'm gonna get it anyway, you know. That was an ugly ass necklace. And I knew, I knew that Tasha had took a picture of herself in that doggone necklace. So she could show the first lady you wasn't the first one to wear this baby. That's what she trying to do. I already know, girl. We know what you're doing. I see through you, Tasha. I see through you. But for some reason, Jacob not seeing through you. Jacob, I think he appreciates the attention. Um, it was an accident, slow moving rumor. I'm, I'm behind a slow moving vehicle right now. I hate to be behind cement trucks. They be little rocks be popping off. Some of my glasses got cracked before. But yeah. So he take it home to um, Carissa. At first she was like, where you been? Where were you? He came in like, you know, had something to do. And she was sitting up there with Charity, you know, talking. And, and yeah, where were you? You know, he done already cheated on her once. So she got concerns. Where were you? And he playing like, well, I'll tell you about later. Da, 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 da. Well, after Charity leave, it is later. She's like, you, you ain't gonna tell me what's going on, right? So he's still playing the game. Still playing the game. Then he produced her that ugly ass necklace. And she was like, ooh, it's pretty. It's different. Yeah, pretty different don't mean cute. That's ugly, girl. Just, just tell the truth to shame the devil. That was ugly ass niggas. <laughs> but she put it on and it kind of swallowed up. She looking like she was on dog on Wakanda. <laughs> All them decorations on the neck. That just was too much. Then Tasha going to send a text message with her word to Jacob. Delete that shit. Delete, delete. Come on now. Come on now. Jacob, be weary. Be very, very weary of that young lady, honey. Tasha Skanks is skanktified. She is skanktified. She ain't saying sanctified. She's skanktified. So, uh, Grace, you know, she playing this game with Rochelle. I'm going to keep my enemies closer. I'm going to get her to work on a project with me and fill her out. But she did ask her, hey, you trying to sleep with my daddy? What's going on with you and my daddy? Rochelle played that role good. Like, I can't believe you. I thought we were going to be sisters together. I just came to you and talked about how, how women are threatened by my presence. And then you come with this. That's not a threatening move. That's me asking you as you uh, mess around my daddy. I'm not threatening by you. I just think that you shady. And I just think you're messing with my daddy with your arm. But she asked a point blank period. You know, Rochelle threw her little bit and walked out the office. And it came back. Girl, I'm not going to let this uh, get between us. We're going to work together. It was like she had a complete change and uh grace was watching it like this bitch is crazy she is crazy crazy cuckoo cuckoo for cocoa pebbles well earlier grace had been with darius but right lady may had already reamed her about her sexual uh, affiliations that she got going on being a passer of the church the good passer not supposed to be having no nookie going on and so, you know, Lady May always chastising her about something. Like, everything is Grace's fault. Everything is Grace's fault. But she chastising her about her sexual conquest and everything going on right now. So, she was over at Darius's house. And she was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get home. Because, you know, my mama already tripping off my, my sexual perversions or whatever. So, he tried to convince her to stay. Like, you know, don't be a hypocrite. We've already had sex. And I like we ain't did it. So, now you're going to be a hypocrite and try to pretend we didn't. Um... He said it in such a loving way. Y'all really like Rick Fox. I'm just not so here for him. Not only am I not here for him as a as a person, it just don't never I ain't never found him attractive. I don't like Darius as a character. Something ain't right with him. I think he works working with Tasha and Rochelle. I really do. I've always thought that he's been work, working with Skates um, for the longest. But you know, I, I be I be suspicious about everybody. I think Remy. Is against uh, was working with the Landry's on Queen Sugar. I thought that Nick was um, going up against June and the Handmaid's Tale, and, and I've been wrong. <laughs> I just don't trust Darius. I don't not trust Rick Fox. But it, it was something in what he said that like kind of like threw Grace off. She was like, "Thank you for um, making me leave even more easier. I appreciate that." You know, it was almost like he was chastising her for you know. I don't know what the issue it's like they finna have a real issue with her being a pastor and him not wanting to go to church i think that's going to be a real issue with them and it's like 
you know, because when she came in, um, when she saw him earlier today, he was like, you know, how it was church. And she was like, oh, well, thank you for asking. Because she know he ain't concerned with it at all. And then she was telling him how she felt about the Rochelle situation. Um, I, I really don't. I like Grace to be in a relationship, but I just I just got my eye on old sleepy eyed Rick Fox. I got my eye on him. Something ain't lining up with that mind. Um so but like I said, like Lady Man had really like reamed into uh the bishop. But like at, in the last episode she said you can go ahead and stay here until we get this IRS matter fixed, right? But she ain't letting Bishop sleep in the bed, baby. I was like, Bishop, if you don't lay your ass down, you better go and lay in that bed. His back all hurt and stuff. He walking like Fred Sanford. Lay your ass in that bed. But lay the bed like I'm not gonna have it. I'm not gonna have it. You better not step up in here. Oh, baby. She's going on and on and on and on and um holding this grudge against the bishop, you know, about his his infidelities with Mavis. You know, there's been at least one time that you slept with my sister after we was married. And I was like, but you like I said, you almost ran off with Lionel. And Lionel probably Grace's daddy. <laughs> So, after all that was coming out, when, when she said that she won't divorce, I'm divorcing your black ass. That's what I'm mean, Your black ass. She said the black ass. She stressed that ass portion. No black. Had an extra K on it. She told me she was going to divorce his ass after all this shit is done and over with, with the tax situation. They got Miss Claire Johnson to agree to give the, the $2 million. What, what the fuck does Claire Johnson got that you got $2 million laying around to get to the church? Baby, I need to be with you at Miss Claire Johnson. But they agreed, she agreed to help pay them off and uh, pay off the tax debt. And so, yeah, after Lady May said, I thought this is all said and done, yeah, I'm going to divorce your black ass. But she told him she was going to divorce him because Grace was steady going in on him about his infidelities and how he needed to be kissing May's butt because, you know, he slept with her sister, da 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 this, da 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 that. He said, oh, but your mama didn't tell you that she had a deferred with Lionel. She didn't tell you that, huh? Oh, St. May. Baby, Lady May was not having it. She was not having it. Baby, she kicked in the door. Like a boom. Ah! She kicked in that dog on door to the church. Like, get off the damn phone. I was like, who is she talking to like that? Get off the damn phone. <laughs> Who was she talking to him? She was going to let go of his black ass and she was going to divorce him. <laughs> I was like, Lady May, you're doing too much, girl. You're doing too much. You're extra mad. You're extra heavily mad. <laughs> As if you ain't did no wrong yourself. Which is what the bishop was really saying. You done did wrong too. One don't outweigh the other. But come on now. You can't be this mad. And you did the same thing. I understand it was your sister. <laughs> but cheating is cheating. I guess it's a little bit a little heavy to her. That she was. She hate her sister. <sighs> I don't know. So yeah. It, I mean it was, it was a good episode. Charity and Aaron's whole situation. That just gets on my damn nerves. He talking about he gonna charge her for kidnapping if she take her baby on the tour. Nigga, you abandon your whole grown ass child. You abandon the baby. That baby better not be five year old when it come on, come back on. <laughs> but you abandon your whole damn child. Like, come on, son. Come on, man. And now you wanna charge her with uh, kidnapping? But Charity, like I say, she is wrong for not. Uh, Letting that man see his kid. When she finally agreed to it, she um went over to his house and took him there. And here's Aaron. She's like, wait a minute, y'all together? Yeah, y'all yeah, together together. They living together. Aaron gonna try to pretend he just up there visiting. Come on now. So she took that baby out again, and then she called Jabari and told Jabari she was getting off the tour. <laughs> and Jabari was like, no, you can't do that. She's like, yes, I gotta take care of my kid. I got I got other things going on right here right now. But we still good. We still together. Baby Jabari hung up on her ass. Click. Crickets. Crickets on the ring. <laughs> I was like, girl, you know doggone well Jabari want to be with Kevin. You know Jabari want to be with Kevin. He didn't want to be with you in the first place. Come on now. Every man she date on this show is a homosexual. So, <laughs> whew. Um, I know I really wish I could have gotten to this episode a lot more better. Cause there was so much more going on. There's a lot of things that I just skipped over. 
Because Lady Bay was just in rare form. Lady Bay was, I just wish I could have took notes to capture some of the words that she was saying, some of the quotes she was having. I mean, they went through this whole charade trying to pretend like everything was good. They holding hands and going to the church like, hey, it's a great day. Blessed be the word. They was going through the church all like that. They putting on, they putting on the front. The secretary was like, I know something like this. Y'all too nice to each other. Too nice to each other. But uh, they put on their airs like that the best they could. But Lady May is like, I'm not having it. I'm not having it no more, no how. Mm -mm. You finna get gone. As soon as this tax situation is taken care of, deuces to you, Bishop James. Deuces. Ooh, especially when she found out that he spent the night with Rochelle at the Dow on Bill Moore. That's who you was with, that hussy. That's who you was with? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Lady May said, I ain't having it. I ain't having it. Y'all go ahead and discuss it down in the comment section because y'all know this, like I said, this is not a full recap. I'm not on my game right now until I actually do my physical move. Um, yeah, discuss that on down in the comment section. Put down what y'all think that I um, forgot. Um, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Things gonna get better around here once I get settled. I appreciate y'all being here. Peace.